One of these piles of tools retails for a whopping $750, and the other was purchased from the popular Chinese retailers Timu and Banggood for less than half price. But do those savings come with a major loss in quality? Can you spot the fake items? But most importantly, has this just become a socially accepted form of theft? Let's find out. So what is a Timu in Banggood? No, they aren't off-Broadway versions of Timon and Pumbaa. Timu and Banggood are popular websites that offer dirt cheap items to purchase directly from China. And they have everything on there from clothing, to appliances, to a hobby worker 30 piece mini table saw kit. Oh yeah, I clearly bought that. Think of these sites like the dramatically underachieving siblings to Amazon. And while Amazon plays by the rules for the most part, these two middle children seem to not care at all. And I'll give you some perfect examples of that throughout the video. I think it's very important for you to have the full context on what makes these marketplaces so effective and potentially damaging to domestic businesses. Now, 40 to 45 years ago, China began its own industrial revolution, transforming the country from agrarian to now the world's largest manufacturer. And back in the day, if you wanted something on the cheap while sacrificing quality, you went to China. But that's no longer the case. Now you can still get something cheap that's also very well made. I mean, look around your house, you're likely viewing this video on something made in China. However, there has been one major change in recent years that completely stacks the odds against domestic companies, the internet. Before, these factories relied on businesses and distributors to move their products around the world, but not anymore, because these websites and apps give them direct access to you and the purchasing power of North American and European consumers. And we love deals. But it gets better. Five months ago when I decided to make this video, I went online and I ordered these products, expecting them to take two months to get here. I mean, it's coming from China and the cheapest way to get here is on a boat. Wrong. Everything arrived in less than 10 days. Now there's a bunch of loopholes and weird agreements, but long story short, a country like China that is still considered to be developing receives discounted shipping rates that are likely subsidized by your own government making it cheaper for them to air freight this package in from across the globe than me or business to ship it down the road. I'm sure there are plenty of instances when an agreement like this is a good thing and helps actual developing countries like Kazakhstan. But in this case, it seems unfair and creates a major disadvantage. Additionally, as these companies have grown, they are buying warehouses around the globe to distribute items even faster. And if you think that was the worst of it, nope, there's even crazier loopholes that we will discuss later. But let's play our first round of Can You Spot the Fake? And let me know what your final score is down in the comments. The packaging, product photos, and descriptions of these glue brush kits are identical. Do you have any guesses? This is sold by Rockler, a popular woodworking franchise in the US. And a sucker named me bought it for $17.99. Now it's actually $14.99. And this one is sold by Timu for $6.99. And when you take these out of the packages, there are differences in quality, but it is very negligible. I can't imagine it would make any meaningful difference in the performance of a glue brush. How about another? Two ratcheting style clamps that are most used with track saws and dog holes. The parts appear to be basically the same in appearance, color scheme. I mean, they feel like they're similar quality except the one in my left hand is available on Banggood for $23, and this Bessie clamp is $43, so it's a little less than half the price for basically the same item. Now, I could create a bunch of tests, but my hunch is their long-term performance is going to be very similar. And if you're a hobby woodworker, I highly doubt you ever put in enough reps on either to wear the mechanisms out. Okay, let's try and make this one a little easier. It wouldn't be a controversial woodworking video without pocket holes. Now, one of these products retails for $99 and the other for 66. Do you have any guesses? To be honest, I really can't find many differences in the quality of either product besides a slightly loose toggle clamp on the cheaper Banggood version. Now, other than that, there really don't seem to be many differences between the higher price Masca and Enjoywood. It's a horrible name, by the way. And I wanna reemphasize a point I made earlier. Just because something costs less and is sold from one of these retailers, it doesn't automatically mean that you're getting junk. The Rockler glue kit, this mask a pocket hole jig are also made overseas in Taiwan. And I think there's some real deals to be had here, but the story doesn't end there because of the bigger global ramifications. Now, one of the items I'm not sure about getting a great deal on 
is this Hobby Woodworker 30 piece mini table saw kit. In general, I tend to be very skeptical of purchasing anything with a motor from a website that starts the user experience by spinning a wheel for discounts and prizes. Now, as someone who relies on their fingers to make a living these days, I do my best to avoid likely danger, but for the sake of YouTube, why not? Speaking of, one of the questions I get asked more often than anything else is, how did you do it? Specifically, how did I create a YouTube channel and grow it into a business of sorts? Knowing there are a lot of people out there looking for that information, I recently teamed up with my buddy Cam from Blacktail Studio, and we're also joined by these crazy talented folks to help answer those questions and many more through the Creator Course. It's a five-week program where we will break down everything from branding to how we film videos, analytics, working with sponsors, and more, plus a weekly live stream with us to ask questions. Now, anyone that has followed me knows I can be blunt, and I'm going to be very matter-of-fact about this next statement. This is a premium course, and if you can see yourself at a minimum generating $1,000 a month on social media in the future, then this could be your answer. Now, if you're not that person, this isn't for you. And furthermore, we are not guaranteeing anyone goes on to become a viral sensation. But we can guarantee this course will remove the learning curve based on what we all know works from our combined 12 million or something followers. So if you're interested, check out the link below and get signed up. So I am super excited about it. Not super excited about the mini table saw. Did you hear that? This saw is so good you get to cut it not once but twice. Seriously, this is a do not buy... Let's get back to talking about loopholes. You know what really sucks other than that piece of junk? Paying taxes. Although I guess the only thing that sucks even more is paying taxes while someone else does not. Hear me out for a second. According to a congressional report from earlier this year, in 2022, the popular retailer Gap paid roughly $700 million in import duties to the US. It's a decent amount for a company valued around $4 billion. How much do you think Timu, who has an estimated worth of $100 billion paid? Basically, nothing. You ever heard of de minimis? I'm guessing no, don't worry, neither did I. But in a legal context, it basically translates to something too small to be meaningful. Now, back in the 1930s, as part of a tariff act, a de minimis exemption was added, and it was intended to keep Americans from paying duties on low-value gifts mailed from abroad or souvenirs. Now, fast forward to 2015, and the de minimis cap was raised from 200 to $800, which is one of the highest in the world. So as long as you spend less than $800 on an order, and let's be clear, anything more would be an incredible feat, companies like Banggood and Timu pay nothing in duties and taxes. Like other policies that start off as well-intentioned, this is probably one that requires a little common sense reform because every day, two to three million de minimis shipments arrive in the US and over 60% are from China. Kind of makes you angry, doesn't it? Now, speaking of being angry, there are a few things people love to complain about more than seeing expensive tools in a woodworking video. It's like a drug of sorts. And ironically, we all pay for nearly everything you see. But I understand why individuals feel that way, especially when they notice a lot of bright red tools from woodpeckers. I will be the first to tell you, I don't think that these are for everyone. But I have bought some products from the company and one of my favorites are these clamping squares. For just two though, you're shelling out $125. Personally, I like them so much, I would buy them again. In fact, I have four. On the Banggood side, you can pick these up for less than $40. And the set that I purchased are dead on square. However, I do find that the screwing mechanism tends to be a little bit more finicky, but it works. Would the quality control be there for every unit sold like they are in woodpeckers? I don't know. But what I do know is this. There is no gray area here. It is theft, plain and simple. Aside from the patent, like many of the products we have reviewed so far, they are stealing their likeness and image, and it's very intentional. That branding took a lot of years to develop. Look, there will always be people that game the system, but the ramifications are rarely discussed in the hundreds of Timu and Banggood Hall videos online. Because it's not just the top of the line revenue that suffers. It's the development and innovations of these products that domestic companies spend significant resources on, only to be undercut on price. I spoke with business owners of some of the brands represented today, and here's the reality. They are fighting these knockoff products daily, and that takes time, lawyers, 
money, lots of money in excess of millions of dollars annually just to protect something of their own. Now with a US-based website like Amazon, it's a long process, but it's possible to get knockoffs taken down. The problem is they tend to pop back up under a different name shortly after. It's like whack-a-mole. But with sites like Banggood and Timu, they are essentially helpless. Remember I said, they don't play by the same rules. And unfortunately, those costs can only be absorbed by the companies for so long, and eventually it must be passed on to the consumer. This to me has always been the nuanced part of the conversation, because it seems like the first person to complain about the high price of a made in the USA product like the micro jig gripper are the same individuals that wanna complain about the lack of manufacturing jobs in the country. And I get it, this is an expensive hobby and times are tough. Lower barriers to entry are enticing, but unfortunately you can't have this one both ways. And my fear after talking with these business owners is eventually the dollars and cents don't add up anymore and they are unable to keep developing new products. Like Jessam, for instance, who prides themselves on high quality goods made in Canada. I mean, this is an incredible miter gauge. It is one of the best on the market. It's really heavy, by the way. Or you could buy a reasonably good inspired buy for half the price. I get it. $50 for a pack of 18 spring clamps seems really high compared to the $9 on Amazon. Although, unlike all the other knockoffs we looked at today, this one is absolute junk. You are truthfully just lighting your money on fire here. Look, Team Hook and Banggood have done a fantastic job of marketing their services. And it's not a coincidence you see so many videos of other channels showing all the deals they found. Both sites have an aggressive affiliate program. And Timu also incentivizes creators to encourage new signups with a referral bonus. Now there's some conflicting information out there, but I've read reports claiming Timu merchandise sales are simply subsidized loss leaders to enable the company to collect their most profitable asset, which is your own data that is eventually sold to a third party. Now, I don't know how much of that is true, and it's no different than what a lot of US companies do, but please be safe and don't download the apps on your phone. Use the website if you choose to order something for yourself. Also, I hate that I need to say this, but I have absolutely no monetary affiliation with any brand or product mentioned today. These are my own thoughts, and I can't fault anyone for wanting to save money, but I hope this video starts a dialogue and encourages you to think twice about who you buy from. I'm going to try and do my best to de minimis these back to China. We'll see ya.